Good morning. Good morning. You, we are truly blessed as a congregation to have folks like Lindy and the Kleins here to participate and make this service even better. So thank you, thank you all of you. <clears throat> Please stand as you're able for our call of worship. God with us, Emmanuel, comes to give us our own holy family here with the body of Christ this day. Rejoice and be glad. Amen. Amen. Let us worship God. And remain standing, please, for our opening hymn, 178. be seated. <clears throat> Assured that God hears our repentance, let us turn our minds to the truth, confessing our sins to God and one another. Please join with me in our unison prayer of confession. Shepherd of Israel, God of hosts, we have turned away from you neglecting the welfare of your creation, ignoring the plight of your people, trampling on the creatures and the plants you have made, taking from earth what we cannot give back. We have not helped our neighbors in need, kept peace within our families, or tended the vine you have planted in our lives. Forgive us and lead us to a more gracious life in your compassion Turn us to your way. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Amen. Please stand as you're able.
You are called to belong to Jesus Christ for the sake of the one God promised to send, named as God's Son, who died and was raised and through whom we receive grace. God forgives you all your sins. You are God's beloved, called to be saints, grant to you and peace. Let us pass the peace of Christ.
that we have is the Lord's. All that we may become and receive is in God's hands. For the sake of the joy that is ours when our bonds grow deep with others, let us give generously for the well-being of the world. You bless us with many gifts. You retrieve us from despair and fear. You visit us with surprising proclamations, and you intend for us good things. We thank you for your steadfast love, for sending signs of assurance, and for the gift of faith. Use our gifts to bring comfort and justice to those in need, reforming the ways of our world for the sake of new life. Amen. Please be seated. Hear now the word of the Lord. 
Again, the Lord spoke to Azal, Ahaz, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men that you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey when he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the boy knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land whose two kings you dread will be deserted. The Lord will bring upon you and upon your people and upon your father's house such days have ha as have not come since the day that Ephraim <coughs> departed from Judah the king of Assyria. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. As your Holy Spirit spoke to Mary, the, the mother of our Lord, speak now to us through your word, that by hearing we too may receive faith and be strengthened to do your will. Amen. Our gospel reading today is from the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. Hear now the gospel of our Lord. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by, from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, just a, a quick aside, if I may, before I, I get started here. Um, you may have noticed the last couple months I've been pastor on call. Whether I'm pastor on call or not, if you have a prayer need, I invite you to call me. Uh, if you're going to go into the hospital, I invite you to call me. I, I did miss someone some time back that was in the hospital, and I really felt bad about that. But if you would call me, I'll either pray with you over the phone or I'll come visit you and pray with you. Uh, but I would love to have the opportunity. Let's pray. Holy Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and praise that you have called us to be your servant people. Bless us now as we contemplate what that means in the light of this gospel lesson. We pray through Christ your Son. Amen. An ardent young Buddhist came to the temple in Tokyo one day at high noon. Uh, first, he clapped his hand together sharply as if to kind of attract the attention of his deity. Then he carefully tossed a coin into the treasury box in what seemed like a, an attempt to, to gain his God's approval. After a moment of prayer, he was gone, his countenance visibly unchanged. A worshiper of Kali stood outside the temple near Calcutta, India. The temple priest, with unblinkingly cold eyes, guillotined the two uh, goats brought as a sacrifice. Again, the moment of dutiful worship was over, and after a few moments, the worshiper slipped away quietly. No one could help but notice the untouched face as he left. Incidents like this from around the world kind of remind us how starkly aware we are of the differences between Christianity and some other world religions. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking other world religions. They all have their good points as well, but Christianity is Christianity, and it's what gives us our salvation. Occasions such as these um, help us Christians to realize that we don't come to worship to placate God. We don't come to worship to capture God's attention. God is very much aware of us uh, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. But it's rare for us to kind of nod off. And that can be, uh, and when we, we leave worship, we're usually not virtually unchanged. We find something to feed on. And if we don't, well, maybe my sermon was a bit dull that week. Um, in, in contrast to these two examples, though, I'll never forget Marion. Marion was a large woman with a very ruddy complexion. She was, she was gorgeous. Uh, she was um, probably 250 pounds, but she had this personality that just broke through to everybody that knew her. When Marian knelt at the altar for Holy Communion, um, just as I was about to hand her the, the bread, she'd look up into my face with the most beautiful smile on her face. She was thrilled to be in the house of the Lord. She was thrilled to receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Those who love Jesus rarely find themselves nodding off or fighting other problems. Now, I have to admit, I've been one to do that. Um, I, and, and to fall asleep on a Jack Shannon sermon over at American is, is really rough uh, because he's a great preacher. But um, I would sometimes wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and I would be wiped by the time I got there. And I found a solution to it. Well, kind of, sort of. My solution is before the sermon, I pray that the Lord will help me to hear whatever I need to hear in that sermon. And it generally works. God is here, wherever we are. And that's what Mary discovered in her home when the announcement of her pregnancy came. This Sunday is also called the Annunciation, as you probably know. And, and that, for us, is the focal point of Christmas. Seven centuries before 
Jesus came, the prophet Isaiah experienced the event where he said, Behold, a virgin will conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. God with us. God with us. God with us. You can say it in any number of ways, and it seems to take on a new meaning each time you do. That's what Mary discovered in her home when it came. Isn't it a, a bit mind-boggling to realize that God is with us? Yes, we can often feel his presence. We can often experience something that reminds us that God is here worshiping, uh, with, with us worshiping. But within the hearts and minds of every believer, God does dwell. And that's why we call his name Emmanuel. The greatest gift God ever gave us was the gift of himself in his son, Jesus Christ. God came to Mary when she was alone, and there was no mediator, no priest, no um, no other person present, probably, and not even her husband. He lived down the street yet. She was a remarkable girl. God noticed Mary because of her genuine piety. Matthew doesn't share with us very much about what surrounded her response uh, to all of this. Uh, fortunately, we have the Gospel of Luke, which shares a lot more, and we'll be dealing with Luke on Christmas Eve. So I'm not going to do a lot with Luke today. But when Mary heard this word, there was no sense of horror. There was no, what will people think? Her response was one of joy. In her deepest humility, she understood that God had responded to her. Behold, she says, behold, I am a handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. Mary could have come up with some objections. She could have said, what will Joseph think? She didn't want to hurt him. Uh, she might have responded, what will my parents think? But instead, let it be done according to your word. I think that too often we as Christians in what we tend to call the Protestant branch of, uh, of the church tend to ignore this noble young woman, or at least we, we tend to underrate her. She was willing to face the trauma of a very young pregnancy. She was even willing to have neighbors and friends think less of her, but look at the remarkable witness she gives. God pays no attention to the value judgments we place on people. I'm sure many of you have noticed that we, we tend to judge people according to, well, I, don't, I, love, I hate this term, net worth. That's not good. I, I remember one time when I was a staff person at the National Church, I was driving a Lexus RX 300 for about five years. And uh, I actually remember when I consulted with one church, somebody complaining, not to me, they called the bishop. And the bishop told him to get over it. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> it, 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 the assistants to the bishop all had a car furnished to them. And so they drove, drove what was furnished to them. But the bishop knew I drove 40 hours a week. And therefore, um, he was perfectly comfortable with what I drove. Those were long weeks. And shame on me for that. Uh, I've always railed at that term net worth. Back when I did studies of congregational giving potential, perhaps for a capital campaign, or whatever the case may have been, um, I used the term net wealth. What is the net wealth of a congregation? We would determine that, and then we would determine the potential that we had going forward. As that is high enough that we're, our, our net worth in the eyes of Jesus Christ is what guides us 
Our net worth is in Jesus' eyes. And that net worth was big enough for him to send his, to come and die for us. Our net wealth is how comfortable we are. One of my mentors used to say, uh, uh, money can't make you happy, but it was never intended to. Money can make you comfortable, but that's not what this is about, is it? We're never told where, whether Mary's family is rich or poor. Since Joseph was a craftsman, a carpenter, and probably also a stonemason, um, he'd have been in the upper range of the income for his community. We often hear that Mary was poor, but that's only conjecture. And by the way, it's not my opinion. Humble estate does not mean poor. Humble estate refers to Mary's piety. So when I think about the humble estate of our congregation, I think about the piety of Mountain Reformed Church. So is Mary poor? Who cares? In the sight of God, Mary was special. And in the sight of God, all of us are special regardless of our income range. God plays no favors, male or female. This is obviously for, obvious from the fact that God selected this one girl to bear his son. She was selected to become the mother of the Son of God. She nurtures God's Son. She instructs him through his youth. And truly she was blessed among women. Mary's personality and piety elevates her to a place of supreme importance in the eyes of the church. It's no, no small wonder that Mary received such high honors in the scripture. Actually, we in a Protestant camp have kind of overreacted perhaps to the fact that Mary is, is so venerated in Catholicism. Now, I, don't misunderstand me. I have great high respect for Catholicism. I received my doctorate from a Catholic seminary and I appreciate very much um, their uh, intellectual acumen. But I think we've overreacted. And I think we need to give Mary more credit. So in this day of the Annunciation, I think it's important for us to, to celebrate what Mary has meant to the church. In John's Gospel, in the book of Revelation, Mary is portrayed as the whole of the Christian church. From now on, all nations will call me blessed. Mary, the handmaiden of the Lord, the servant of God, symbolizes God's servant people, the whole Christian church. Mary, full of grace, demonstrates that God puts a lot of stock in us. Mary's mission is our mission. Her function in life was to bring the Savior to this mortal call. His gift to us is the gift of, of his son. Her attitude is one of, do what you will to him and me, only let me serve. It's the same ministry to which we're called in, in this body of Christ. Let us serve. She demonstrates our mission to fulfill the Great Commission, having gone into all the world make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the servant, the handmaiden of the Lord, inspire in us all the desire to be Christ's servant church on earth. Amen. Stand as you're able, we'll sing hymn 217.
Let us affirm our faith by reading together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven, and is sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now please be seated. <laughs> Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, King of glory, King of kings and Lord of lords, Son of the living God and Son of David, come. Come now to your church that you have purchased with your blood. Come with your precious presence that we may rejoice in you. Come and reign over us that we may serve and follow you. We pray, Almighty God, for those who are ill among us, those who are suffering from COVID or flu or those with chronic pain. We pray for all who await upcoming procedures that may they all be healed according to your mercy. We pray also for those of our friends that suffer from health issues. Holy God, we pray also for those among our church family and friends of our church family who are near the end of their earthly journey. For those with faith, we pray that you would give them a constant assurance of their victory in Jesus. For those people of not of faith, we ask, O oh God, that they would find you in their final days. We ask your continued healing for those who are fighting cancer. May the presence of your Holy Spirit lift them up with continued confidence in you. May they find healing when possible, and when not, grant them peace in their final days. We pray also for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. May the comfort of your Holy Spirit be their constant companion. All of these, O oh Lord, and others of whom we may, may be unaware, bless for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. People of God, do not be afraid. Listen to the word of our Lord who promises to be with us in every age. Spread this word to those who live without hope. Live this word as people who know God with us. Emmanuel. Now, let the face of God shine upon you to bless you and to save you from all doubt and danger through Jesus Christ now and always. Amen.